I have entitled my message uh, today, The Challenges of uh, the 21st Century. And I have uh, given you some copies of my outline for today. It may not be enough for all, but at least uh, it will guide you to some important thoughts I would like to bring to you this morning. Um, we live in a very challenging period of the first century. When I was born, it was uh, a different period of uh, the 20th century. And, uh, you know, your time is very di different now. At least it was my privilege to, to be working in the church uh, in this uh, late period. And so many things, so many thoughts I have, so many ideas I have is no longer applicable to the 21st century, though I tried hard. But uh, the pandemic has uh, uh, delayed my turning over of my own uh, work. And so uh, today, we, uh, all this, you know, we live in a very different uh, world. And uh, we uh, enjoy uh, the blessings of the summer and uh, wonderful things about uh, uh, the past. You know, way, way back when I was young and we were children, summer is a very wonderful time. Today, summer is a terrible time. It's so hot. But you see, uh, about uh, 70 years ago, when it's summertime, we were, we were happy because there are no classes. And then early morning after doing work at home, we go to, to the seashore. That's where we're, we gather, you know, my, my friends who were young then. And we would uh, dive into the sea. So it was very hot, but we never felt the, the hot sea when uh, you, were, you were taking a bath. And then we would go fishing, go swimming, go diving. It was a wonderful time that uh, the world today does not experience anymore. And uh, when I go back home, in fact, last month, uh, September, no, 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 Sep February, we went home to Miranda. And we went, I went uh, by the seaside. Well, many of my classmates and friends were not, no longer there. They have been dead long ago. There were only very few of us who were alive. And I went, went back to the seashore. It's not as beautiful as we had a seashore years ago. And, uh, you know, you can go swimming like before. You can uh, enjoy uh, the the many wonderful things we can do. Because after taking a bath in the morning and noon time, we go home and have our lunch and then go back to, to the shore and then play again until sunset. And what a wonderful time we had. So the 21st century we, where you are now is so different from the 20, 20th century where we were and uh, so in church, you know, during those summers, we enjoyed uh, uh, work, working in the church, attending VBS. Believe it or not, our VBS was two weeks. Yours today, VBS is just two days. What a lonely VBS that was. Imagine two weeks of VBS and playing and enjoying your friends. It cannot be compared to your BBS today because it's so boring to us. And uh, we also had our tent meetings, evangelistic meetings that church would uh, uh, conduct together with uh, some important uh, evangelists from the Bizarre Fellowship in Negros, in, in Ilo and Negros Occidental. They were all gone. Our, our evangelists are all gone now. But during the time we enjoyed our evangelistic meeting, evangelistic meeting was every night. 
And you know, one month, so every evening we go to the tent, there was a it's called tent meeting because they have big tents and all people in our barangay would gather there. And then uh, we would be there. In fact, I remember when I was young, when our evangelist would invite to accept the Lord. You know, my mother would come behind me and said, raise your hand, <laughs> raise your hand. I do not know how many times I raised my hand for the Lord. But I now clearly remember way back when I was third year high school, it was the only time when I truly accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. In a way, what a wonderful time it was. One of the BB, uh, evangelists we had, Dr. Russell Eversole, passed away just last year. So he was the last of the great uh, men of God, and uh, they say the last of the Mohicans <laughs> to, uh, to, to live in the time when we were young. Well, so it's all gone now, I'm no longer young, or you say, I'm younger. But uh, so all that is done, and now we look at the 21st century. That's why I entitled my message, The Challenges of the 21st Century so different from the challenges that uh, we had in the 20th century. So just two things I would like to take up with you. Examples of faithful men from way back. And then uh, follow on their footsteps to the end. Just two simple outlines. So I would like to start now. First, you're the example of examples of faithful men who serve the Lord. And through, through eras in world history, first one was during the time of Moses to, to Joshua. So you remember, you're reading your Bible, and uh, when uh, you read the history of the Bible, and then uh, the history of Israel in the Bible, uh, remember how many years Moses was was a prince in Egypt? 40 years. Imagine being a prince for 40 years. Sa ato na karon, di ka nakagwantaan na. We even got tired of our being working in working as professionals for 20 years. How much more? 40 years spending your time playing and enjoying uh, yourself. But it all ended for Moses because one day he did some, some crime in Egypt. He had to run away from Egypt. And you remember when he went? Uh, Midian. Midian at 40 years. And uh, he was in Midian uh, a shepherd watching sheep and goats you know, for 40 years. But also that's where he fell in love with his wife. So her, his wife was a shepherd girl. And uh, imagine today finding a wife who is a shepherd girl. No, we don't do that today. You, you're looking for a wife who is a professional, not a shepherd girl. And then he continued working there. And then uh, that's 40 years being working in the, in the, in the farm and uh, getting married to a woman. And then uh, another 40 years, uh, uh, he was called with the Lord uh, to be a leader of Israel when they were in the desert for 40 years. Another 40 years. And uh, from there, that was the end of his life. In all, he had uh, lived 140 uh, years, 120 years. And then uh, God took away Moses. So he did a wonderful work being leader of a nation. Uh, way back in the olden times. Now, who took his place? 
Joshua. So jo Moses was a shepherd and a farmer and a leader, but Joshua was a warrior. He was he stepped, he spent his time learning just leadership from Moses and also practicing his young uh, young Israelites for battle. And you remember, after Moses died, they went to Israel and then they went to battle in all the areas of uh, the, the Holy Land for 20 years. In fact, uh, Joshua led in in defeating 17 kings, the Bible says. 17, 17 ka mga, ka mga hari, tanan. And then after that, uh, he, uh, he ended the work, he ended his life, and the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua, you did well in following, completing the work of my leader, Moses, and now you go and rest. So that was uh, the first uh, segment of world history where people experienced who God is. And so what was the meaning of that for us today? During the time they focused and worked hard to complete a difficult task, the task of uh, establishing a nation that believed God. So from 1526, so 1398 BC, and uh, so uh, it happened, you know, in our time today, 3,000 years ago. But it was a very important part in the history of the world and in the plan of God. So let her be here. Number two, God appointed another person, another place. It's no longer the pioneering days of Moses and Joshua. It was the time of battle of making the people of, the, of God strong in their faith. And so it was the time of Elijah and Elisha. They were two of the greatest uh, prophets of Israel in their history. It happened about 840 to 800 uh, BC. So it was a very long time ago, about 2,000 years ago. But it was a very important uh, important part in the history of the world and in Israel. Why? Because during the time of Elijah was the challenge for Israel to come back to God and rise because they have to fight against the rise of idolatry, especially Baal, Baal worship. And uh, so God raised during the time important kings like King Jeroboam, and King Rehoboam to, uh, to lead and protect Elijah from uh, the, 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 the danger of losing his life because people did not believe in God. But uh, so you remember the wonderful stories of Elijah and uh, Elisha. Elijah challenged uh, the prophet of Baal if you have true God, let us go to Mount, Sin Mount Carmel and then we'll see who is the true God. So you, you remember the stories that uh, we taught in Sunday school uh, when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal UK, we will sacrifice to the Lord in Mount Carmel. You ask the Lord to burn your, your sacrifice. No fire, huh? Wala. Wala, wala pospro, ha? No lighter. But just ask uh, Baal to send you fire from heaven to burn your sacrifice. So from morning till afternoon, late afternoon, the prophets of Baal, remember the story we taught in PBS and in, in Sunday school? They tried all day to ask uh, Baal to give them fire, but no fire came. And then you remember a very beautiful story. At the sunset time, Elijah said, okay, you gathered here. Those who believe in the Lord, let us pray to God. 
And he prayed, Lord, if you are the true God, you send fire to burn the altar. And you know, it's a very beautiful scene, I think. Someday we will ask the Lord to play the video. It's a very beautiful uh, uh, scene because, you know, fire came from heaven. It burned the sacrifice. It burned the rocks where the sacrifice was laid. It burned also the dust. So, grab you know, bali from the animal to the fire to the rocks to the dust. Kurutanan. But Elijah had a problem because the king was uh, against him, especially uh, the queen, queen, uh, queen, uh, the just a minute, just a minute. Uh. Oh, Jezebel, see Jezebel. And so uh, uh, that was uh, the king and the queen who attacked Elijah. He said, we don't believe in your God, but uh, you destroyed all our prophets, so you you, we give you two days and uh, we will find you and kill you. So Elijah spent his uh, years hiding in his uh, work as a prophet. So it was uh, a lonely work because uh, you remember he went to, to hide in a ravine where he was uh, fed by, by uh, by, by the birds who gave them food in the morning and in the evening. And then he went to the widow, the widow who had one son. And in that particular day, they had no more food, the last food. But the, that was brought to them by, uh, by the birds. And so Elijah said, you feed me, and every morning you will have food. And evening, evening, I, the last, the last flower, bottle of flour, he said, every morning you will have enough flour, in the evening he was enough flour, until rain will come. And so it has happened to Elijah, and many other miracles there. But uh, it was a story of a great prophet, Elijah, during the time when people in Israel did not believe God. And they lived, uh, they believed the, uh, the, the, the gods and the false uh, gods of the heathen nations. So Elijah, the Lord said, you get an assistant. And who was the assistant, remember, in Sunday school? He was named Elisha. And uh, Elisha was a rich farmer. So Dato, but uh, Elijah, Elijah called him. You leave your farms and your business, come to me. Follow me because the Lord is commanding you. So Elisha said, okay, but please allow me to say goodbye. So he gathered all his workers in the farm. They had a, they had a fiesta. They killed the best uh, ram there and they had a fiesta. And after that, Elisha said, Okay, goodbye to all these things. I'm leaving everything to serve you. So you remember, to all of you who are who willing to belong to working the Lord and pastor's kids or pastor's family, you know, your parents did that. They left everything to follow the Lord. So gikuyawan ang mga pastor's kids kaya basin pubri sila. Pubri sila. Ang tunod sa ilang kamatayon, mamatay ang ilang papa, wala sila korta, like what happened here in the time of Elijah. But that is not true. Because the, the Lord in our time, today, He has taken care of the pastor. He can care also of the ch pastor's children. He has even taken care of the pastor's grandchildren. Di ba? So, don't be afraid to serve the Lord. That was the time of Elisha and Elijah. So Elijah and Elisha ministered to Israel some 40 years. And there was a revival in Israel and in Judah. Why? Because 
the people of Israel went back to the Lord. Well, people in Judah, they worship God again. You know, after that contest there in Mount Carmel, people started to go back and believe in the Lord. So today, we have a wonderful time worshiping God and doing His will. So are you willing to leave everything to follow the Lord? Even our professionals today and our business people who are believers, they are willing to follow the Lord and leave everything and the Lord will provide for them. Especially in our time, it's the 21st century, it's very hard to follow the Lord. It's very hard to believe that the Lord will feed you and give you all your needs. In fact, today in the Philippines, many pastors, kids, are some of the most successful people in in the Philippines, even in the whole world, in America especially, even in Europe, some of the most successful people are children of pastors and missionaries. They are some of the greatest uh, athletes, some of the greatest uh, scientists, some of the greatest writers that the world has ever seen. So no regrets, only thanksgiving for all of that. So that was the time of Moses and Joseph, a time of, you know, believing in the God of the Bible and following him. It was also the, the time of Elijah and Elisha, the time of leaving everything in order to follow the Lord in this 21st century and never be afraid because the Lord will give you some of the greatest experiences in life some of the most thrilling experiences you will ever have in following the Lord. Now the third one is the time of Paul to Timothy, which uh, we were reading a while ago in 2 Timothy. If 2 Timothy was the last letter of Paul. And just a few months after, Timothy passed away. And uh, I mean, no, not Timothy, but Paul passed away and uh, one of the greatest uh, writers of the, the Bible, one also of the greatest uh, missionaries, modern missionaries in the 21st century that uh, the world has ever seen. So, uh, he wrote the second, first and second Timothy, especially second Timothy. It was the last letter of Paul to the young man, Timothy. He was... Uh, a young pastor, and uh, he had many doubts and fears about leaving everything for the Lord and working in the work of the Lord. But there's no regret. In fact, he wrote here, Paul gave him the word. This was the word Paul said, I have fought a good fight. So it's for the old pastors. We do not have many old pastors. Here in Cebu, they are mostly young. I'm the oldie, only the oldie pastor here in Cebu right now. And uh, so what they have done for the Lord here is very little compared to what the Apostle Paul had done. He said they have fought a good fight, so the fight was good, never bad. I have finished the race. So how could you say that Paul finished the race when he, many times he was imprisoned? <laughs> and persecuted. Many times he was hungry. <laughs> did he finish the race? Well, well he did. And he said, uh, I have remained faithful. So we give our salute to many of our pastors, especially in our case, in our area in Negros and in Iloilo. Many of our workers finished the race at the first. Well, in fact, the father of Pastor Prophet here was one of those in our area who live and serve faithfully and they are now gone uh, with the Lord. And so uh, Paul said, be faithful during this end time period. So this is the 21st century, the end time period of the world, the end time period of all our professionals and engineers, you who still uh, uh, desire great things for you. Maybe many want to go to Europe 
or you go to uh, to America. Well, many did go to America. Many did work there. But uh, remember the main work that the Lord has given us is here in the Philippines. This is the most exciting place to work. And uh, so, what is the message of uh, Paul to Timothy, which is the message also to do to us? In First, Second Timothy chapter 2, he was uh, speaking to young Timothy and other younger workers together with him. He said, be a good soldier. So, do you know, do you have beautiful thoughts here about uh, the good soldier of Christ? He said here, verse 3, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ. And Christ's soldiers, do not let yourself be come uh, tied up in the affairs of this life. For then you can satisfy the one who has uh, enlisted you. Uh, follow the Lord who rules for doing his, uh, Lord's rule for doing his work. And then verse 5, he said, you are not only uh, good soldiers, you are good athletes. So the good athlete always frames and disciplines himself and gives the best to his, uh, to his uh, craft of being an athlete. So many of our Filipino athletes now are training for the Olympic Games. And uh, we have many practicing together with our, our, our champion in, in athletics. So we hope that we'll get more gold during the next Olympic Games. And then verse 6, be hard workers like farmers. So working for the Lord is like working in a farm. And uh, when you work in a farm, you have to spend your muscles and all your strength. And then you give it all and leave the, the, the result to God because you do not know. Even if you plant wide uh, farms of rice and corn or others, it's up to, for the Lord to give the harvest. But in a successful harvest, okay lang, try again. And so that's how farmers work. Even in our lives, when we work in your prof profession as a professional, you have to work hard like a farmer. It's, it depends whether you, your business uh, company will succeed. If not, you lose all the business together with all your workers, together with you. And then you start another one, look for another job. So these are the things that uh, Paul was telling Timothy in Second Timothy chapter 3, uh, chapter 2. But now when we go to chapter 3, he was saying there's a lot of danger in the last days, especially now where you live. So chapter 3, remember, what does it say here? Verse 1, in the last days there will be very difficult times like we are experiencing now. People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and uh, proud, scoffing at God, dis, uh, disobedient to their parents, and uh, ungrateful. So these are very important things that Paul was saying to Timothy, to, to Timothy in chapter 3. Are you, experiences, are you experiencing the same now in the company where you work or in your neighborhood or even within your own relatives in the family? Are you experiencing all these difficult times? So that's uh, the reality of the goodness of the times that we live. Be a good soldier anyway. And uh, you face the dangers of the last days no matter what so in these difficult times so these are important things that i have just told you about examples of faithful men in the past of moses to joshua elijah to elisha paul to timothy these are 
different aspects of the work of the Lord in the past and in today, especially today in the 21st century, where you face until the Lord comes or until you die. So the second and the final thought I would like to bring to you is follow on their footsteps to the end, who are your heroes in the past. You follow their footsteps. You follow their ambitions. Do you still have your dreams? Yes, follow your dreams on the truth that you follow God's leading for you. So three things that I would like to take up with you. That's our A, just shortly, shortly. Uh, the pres be a prisoner for the gospel. So that's what, like Moses. I, I like my Moses to Elijah. They were prisoners to the work of the assigned to them by the Lord. So keep the standards. You perform them well and uh, stick to them. Second thing that you must do, stand in the midst of the battle for a, good, a godly life. Today, we are challenged by our times how to be living in a godly life. In, that is our battle today. So young people, children, old people, what is your battle? Is it in your profession? Or is it in your business? Or is it in your health? You have to do battle with your health because you see like today, many people, if you don't eat uh, well, especially when you are already 50 and 60, you continue to eat uh, foods that are unhealthy, uh, you watch out because when you are 60 or 70 or 80, you will have all the diseases because you have not been careful in eating the right nutrient and right food in your time. So, I have many friends like that. I have many relatives like that. Oh, in their young lives, okay lang, ang kaon nila. Mayo magkaon sang letson, mayo magkaon sang, uh, sang mga to rich foods. And then, pantay ka kay pag 50, 60 mo. Daga na yung mga cancer or what? or 70, mas samot pag yun. At pag 80, ay, mas hindi ka nakabot. So, that's how important is uh, being faithful during this end time period, not only in your work, but also in taking care of your health, especially taking care of your food. And so, letter C and final here, keep the faith in matters where no matter what happens in the world. So we appreciate many of our Christians, wherever they are, whether in the Middle East or in America, they keep strong in their faith no matter what happens. So we appreciate them for that. And they, say they have a good testimony. But you remember the lessons, huh? That what the lessons they, have, they are learning now and we are learning today, keep in good health. Eat well, sleep well, <laughs> work well, and uh, you will live long. And do more for the Lord in your time. So like uh, what uh, some uh, teachers always usually say, keep the good fight of faith. We are fighting a battle, so be a good fighter. And... Uh, for us, it is not the battle of, of, uh, of uh, the feasts. It is not the battle of uh, being in athletics. It is not the battle of basketball or not the battle on how many goals you have uh, shot. And, uh, or it is not the battle of how many uh, companies you have set up. It is not the battle of uh, how many dreams you have fulfilled. But uh, keep on did a battle of faith. So be a witness for the Lord in these last days. That is the message. That is the challenge for the 21st century. 
the challenge for us was a different challenge than yours. And uh, so, for us, the we belong, the we belong, we belong to the previous century. We still have the beautiful opportunity to live in this century and do something a little bit more, just a little bit more, and enjoy our lives and God's plan for ourselves. But the challenge is for you, who belong to the 21st century. This is your century. This is your chance, and there is no other else. So remember, be like Moses and just Joseph. You stick, you focus hard on the work that was given to you. Be like Elijah and Elisha in a very, very difficult challenge of uh, working against uh, uh, wrong religion and false uh, hope and false uh, uh, faith. And so just like in the time of Paul and Timothy, when some of the workers like Timothy is passing away, and some new workers like Timothy are taking care of taking over the work. So they need to fight the good fight of faith. So in a way, this is 21st century, and we cannot go back anymore whether we like it or not. We can only go, go back in our dreams about the past, which will never come back again. But oh, we enjoy being here. We enjoy being with you. We enjoy uh, planting churches again and weeding souls again. The question for you is, are you enjoying it? Are you happy you are here? And do you enjoy it? Well, it's up for you to, to answer the question. I will not force you. It's only you and the Lord. Maybe tonight as you meditate, are you enjoying being here in 2024? So may the Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for these important challenges, important thoughts. May we stand following you and enjoying it. Until the end, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.